1940, morale in the United Kingdom was very low. Families were separated from loved ones, and people were doing their best to survive World War II. In late May 1940, against the backdrop of the Dunkirk evacuation and the unstoppable German advance, Churchill disregarded calls for peace talks with Hitler. Britain would fight on, he ordered. Scotland was a strategic interest point for Hitler due to its coast and many naval sites. Hitler recognized Scotland had the opportunity for oil production. Churchill said Germany couldn't be trusted to respect any treaty. He was convinced that Hitler would seize the opportunity to take over the Royal Navy and its naval bases. On September 24, 1940, King George VI of England signed a royal warrant to create the George Medal. The purpose of the medal was to reward the many acts of civilian courage and acts of great bravery. It's a decoration of the United Kingdom and Commonwealth, awarded for gallantry, not in the face of the enemy. In Aberdeen, Scotland, Marion Patterson worked as a senior fire guard with the Civil Defense in 1942. She lived at 1 Little John Street, Aberdeen. On August 7, 1942, after an enemy air raid, a four-story granite tenement building on South Market Street had undergone extensive damage. Marion accompanied Andrew Hurry, her staff officer, to the scene. Working with her crew, they freed three men from the wreckage on top of the pile of debris. But another man was still trapped below. It was found that only a small person would be able to work through to him. Marion burrowed through the debris for 15 feet and directed rescue operations from below. The total rescue took two and a half hours. When she emerged from the wreckage, she said, I was only lending a hand. Two of her co-workers and a nurse named Mary Park were killed during this rescue. She inadvertently left her tunic behind after she said she tried sneaking away home. She really didn't want to be recognized for just another day at work. Policemen seeking to return her tunic traced her identity by her name tag. Marion was Britain's first senior fire guard to win a medal for heroism, for outstanding courage and initiative, and without regard for her own safety. In December of 1942, at the age of 31, she was awarded the George Medal. This is Marion's story of receiving the George Medal, read from her memoirs, and narrated by her two granddaughters, Sky Wanamaker, and Arlene Guzik. The war raged on. The damage to our city was indescribable and times were bleak. I believed I needed to contribute in some way and in October of 1942 I became a senior fire guard for the Civil Defense in Aberdeen, Scotland. My husband Pat was still away serving for the RAF in England so I believed I could continue my hairdressing and also work for the Civil Defense. One day while on duty, I was using a stirrup pump to extinguish a burning building when I heard cries for help coming from the building. With my stirrup pump in hand, I could see a way to start burrowing under some walls that had collapsed. It took quite some time, but I managed to get to the sailor who was trapped below. Unfortunately, his legs were trapped under some timber beams and I could not free him. He was too weak to help me. I looked around and found some loose pieces of wood and by pushing on those loose pieces, I had enough leverage to partially lift the timber. At that point, the sailor was able to help wiggle himself loose. I called above for help and finally a rope was lowered through the damaged walls. I was able to tie a rope around the sailor's waist and with help got him out of the burning building. We were both exhausted but safe. One minute after we escaped from the building it collapsed. I could not believe it. 
How lucky we were to have gotten out in time. I didn't think anything more about the incident until a few days later. I received notice that the incident had been reported to authorities, and I wondered why. Much to su my surprise, the incident had been written up in the London Gazette on December 4, 1942. The next thing I knew, all kinds of people I knew were asking me what had happened. Even the local papers began coming to our house to ask questions. Finally, I received an invitation to attend at Buckingham Palace on the 12th of February, 1943, to receive a presentation of the George Medal by King George VI. It was such an honor, and I will never forget being at Buckingham Palace and being greeted by the King. During the presentation of my George Medal, it was announced that I was the first fire guard to win a medal while engaged in fire duties. As part of the award, I was also selected for a portraiture in a special section of the National Gallery of England set aside for heroes and heroines of the Blitz. I was also invited to be a guest at Balmoral Castle and was able to visit at any time I wished for the remainder of my life. I was truly honored and could not believe it. However, I finally became accustomed to the reality of the matter. The famous Scots artist, Mr. Robert Civil of the Royal Scottish Academy had been commissioned by King George VI to paint my portrait. Mr. Civil worked at the Aberdeen College of Art and I was scheduled to meet him for several sittings. I kept the portrait a secret from Pat and my family because it came as such a surprise to me. I wanted it also to be a big surprise to them. I was able to dash away from my hairdressing shop to attend special sittings for my portrait. When it was finally completed, I attended Buckingham Palace again for the presentation. The original painting was hung in the National Gallery, London, England, and was shown in a special wing for heroes and heroines of the 1939-1945 war. My portrait had the honor of hanging between General Eisenhower and General Montgomery. I also received two replicas and a sketch in black and white. The sketch was sent to the gallery in Aberdeen, Scotland. Marion was very proud to have brought such a high honor to Aberdeen. She realized that while she was personally awarded the George Medal, other civil defense workers also risked their lives that day. Marion understood that she was made an example of, to boost the morale of all people of Scotland and England who were doing their best to live, raise families, and survive World War II. She stated, I shall wear the ribbon on behalf of the other workers and in memory of those who lost their lives that day. <laughs>